Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now this is your classic still life setup but just to make it a bit more interesting what I've done is added some composite elements to it. By adding the composite elements uh, you can control the amount of distortion that you place in the image. Uh, this can give it a dreamlike quality uh, and something different to the straightforward still life that you see most of the time. OK, so let me show you what I've got set up so far. At the back I have an old pallet uh, which I've just uh, suspended from this stand uh, a fair distance away from the uh, table where I have the main subject. Uh, by using uh, a, a distance here, what we can do is then introduce uh, different lighting for the background and the main subject. So the subject that I've got, I've just set up on this uh, piece of uh, old aluminium, um, is just a, a few apples uh, and some cloth. Uh, the idea here is that um, uh, I've just grouped these together so that we can uh, explore the, uh, the different types of lighting that you can create. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, some hard lighting and also filling in the, the image with some soft as well. Uh, and then further forward still, I have the camera, uh, I have my 24 to 70 zoom lens on here at the 70mm end, which gives again a, a fair working distance between the subject and the camera. Uh, the camera is tethered uh, into Capture One software and on the top of the camera I have this uh, flash sync trigger which will allow me to uh, control all the flash heads. OK, so with all that in place, um, I think the thing to do to start with would be just to um, put a light to illuminate the background. But before I even do that, uh, the very first thing I'm going to do uh, is just check just to see what sort of contamination, if any, I'm getting from the house lights. So I'll just take a test image. OK, and you can see from this uh, we're getting a slight ghosting of an image, uh, but nothing too serious. Uh, this is at uh, f8, so that may well change as the shoot goes on. I'm using a shutter speed of 250th per second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera, and the ISO is 100. Uh, I've set the white balance um, to an arbitrary flash, although this can always be changed later in post-production if you need to. OK, so with that uh, exercise complete, uh, the next thing to do would be just to introduce uh, the first light. Here we are, so I'm just going to place this in here. The idea of this light will be just to put an accent on the background, um, just a, a shaft of light if you like. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we uh, take some test shots. Uh, so this is a Profoto uh, D2. Uh, this is a uh, 1000 joules uh, and it has a uh, reflector on here which I've added some barn doors to uh, so I can control where the light will fall. OK, so with that um, arbitrarily set, uh, what I can do to start with is just take a, another test image and we'll see what happens. So I'll just turn that on. on. There we go. And we take a test. There we are. So you can see from that uh, I'm getting this uh, shaft of light on the background. It's not quite in the right place yet, I don't think. Uh, I just need to move it over to the right a little. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. In fact, I might just spin it round a bit. There we go. Right, just to aid me in that, I'll just turn the modelling light on uh, and just have a look through the camera to see if that's going in anything like the right place. Ah, oh, yes, that seems to be a bit better for being turned round. I might just turn it round ever so slightly more. go. Let's turn the modeling light off. Give that another test. Yes, that's better. That's been more of the position that I want. Okay. 
Now, because I have uh, quite a large separation between the background and the subject, uh, any light which is falling on here isn't really affecting this at all, which is exactly what I want. So the next thing to do would be to set up some lights or a light uh, to uh, illuminate the subject, which is what I'm going to do now. There we go. So I'm just going to place this, uh, this other D2. This is another Profoto D2, uh, again with a reflector on it. Um, and I'm pointing that vaguely straight at the subject. So this time what I'm going to do is I'll turn on this light and I'll turn off the one on the background uh, so we can see exactly what this is doing. So we'll just do that and we'll fire that. Okay, there we go. So this is starting to get there. We're starting to uh, get the effect that I want. Um, very contrasty image. Uh, all of the front faces of the apples uh, are in deep shadow, which is what you'd expect uh, from that. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little, and we'll have a little bit of a, a look round, just to see if everything is properly in focus. Uh, so the. The front apple is definitely in focus. The other two are ever so slightly out. Um, what I think I might do to start with is just increase the aperture from f8 to um, f16, just to give me a bit of a bigger depth of field. There's more leeway then. OK, so with that set, um, obviously, uh, that's a two-stop change, so I'll need to add two stops of uh, energy uh, to that light, which is what I will do now. One, two. There we go. And we'll try that again. OK, we'll just have a closer look around the image again. Oh yes, that's much better now. Uh, these are in focus, and these are in focus as well is good. OK, so having done the two separate elements, um, what I will do now is turn the uh, back one back on again, uh, and we'll just try that. Obviously, the exposure will have changed because I have changed the aperture on the camera. Uh, so we'll see what we need to do to that light. So I'll just turn that one on, and we'll fire them both at the same time. There we go. Now, I think that actually just needs to go up ever so slightly. It was possibly a bit over before. Um, so I'm just going to take it up by uh, half a stop. So just add half a stop of energy to that one. There we go. I'll just try that again. There we are. That's better. Uh, so this is what we had before, and that's what we've got now. So the next thing to address would be um, just to fill in the front of uh, these apples. But the, the base, the background, is more or less as I want it. That's quite a nice uh, image. And to do that, what I'm going to do is use this piece of card. Uh, again, this is just a piece of old mount board. Uh, and I'm just going to recycle some of the light from here uh, onto the front of these apples. I'm actually going to put this fairly close to the subject. Now it will be within the image that I capture, but that doesn't really matter because I can always uh, paint it back out again uh, in Photoshop. So let me just take that as a test. There we are. Yes, and this has given me quite a nice sheen on the front of the apples, which is what I wanted. Uh, so on the previous image, we had this, and then with the fill-in, we have this, which is just the right amount of fill-in, I think. 
Okay, so with that part filled in, uh, we no longer need this in the image, so I can take it out. Let's put that down there on the floor. And to introduce some distortion into the image, what I'm going to do is use this um, Pyrex baking dish. Um, the way that these are manufactured, the bases are never flat. Uh, so you end up with um, some optical um, errors in the glass. And we can make use of that uh, simply by placing it in front of the lens. So what I'm going to do is quite carefully, without moving the camera, just hold this in front of the lens whilst looking through it. And I'll just fire a few images with the distortion in different places. There we go. Okay, with all those various bits captured then, so the next thing to do would be to put them all together in Photoshop, uh, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I've selected the images that are going to make up all the different elements uh, of this uh, composite. So this is uh, just the background. This is the background and foreground. And this is the background and foreground with the uh, fill-in. Uh, so it's filling in the front of the, uh, the apples. And then finally, I've picked this one of the uh, distorted images taken through the bottom of the, uh, the dish. OK, so the first thing to do would be uh, just to make a stack of these images, and then we can uh, play with them a little easier. Uh, so just go to File, come down to Scripts, and down to Load Files into Stack. Uh, add Open Files, and just click on OK. So this will create a new image uh, which consists of all the separate layers that we mentioned before. So just for now, I'm going to turn off the picture which is just the background, and I'm also going to turn off the picture which is the distortion, which will just leave me with um, the apples and the filled in apples. Uh, so this is the one that I'm going to concentrate on. So I'm just going to move that so it's above the base image, as it were. Uh, so if I turn this on and off, it will just make the um, fill-in board disappear and reappear. So what I need to do is just add a uh, layer mask to that layer, like so, and then making sure that the foreground colour is set to black. I will just paint out this part of the image here. There we are. There we go. Uh, and just to make sure, I'll just use a very large brush just to complete that part of the edit. Now I've just caught part of the uh, image down the bottom here that I didn't want. So I'm just going to go back to white uh, and just make my brush a little smaller. Yeah. And I'll just paint that back in the way it should be, like that. So now I have the filled in apples, uh, but without the board in the way. So the next stage would be to look at adding the distortion that we had earlier. So if I just turn that on, obviously being at the bottom of the stack, you're not going to see it. So I'm just going to bring it up and put it above the others. OK, now one of the effects of having the uh, distortion on is that it would actually move various parts of the uh, image around. So just to make sure it's all still lined up or to adjust it if it isn't, I'm just going to drop the opacity to about 50% uh, and just check that. Well, actually, it doesn't look too bad. It has moved ever so slightly, but I don't think it's going to affect too much of what I want to do. OK, so for now, I'll just put that back at full uh, opacity. And again, I'm just going to add 
uh, masked that layer. And I'm just going to paint through the bits that I want to be clear, which are going to be uh, the, the apples, really. Uh, so again, painting in black. Let's make the brush a little bigger. There we are. just take the front of that and make it quite clear too. And let the rest go off as it were. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to drop the overall opacity of that layer just so it doesn't affect the image quite as much as it has been doing. There we are, something like that. So what I think I might like to do is just add a bit more distortion um, to this layer. So I'm just going to pick on the uh, image area itself in that layer uh, and go up to Edit, Transform and Warp. OK, what this allows you to do is warp various parts of the image. Uh, now I've got this set to a, uh, a grid uh, of 5x5. Five five. Um, the default is just to have an open image like this. Uh, and basically these are little handles which you can then grab hold of and move around to distort the image. So if I pick one on the edge for instance, just to show you what happens, if I move this around, it will then move the image around. Can you see that going? Yes. There you go. OK, so we don't actually want that. I'll just cancel out of that. Um, so just to make it clearer what I'm doing in the first place, I'm just going to increase the opacity to full. And then with that image selected, we go to Edit, go to Transform, go to Warp. Uh, this has gone back to a 5x5 five five grid, uh, which is what I want. Uh, so then, I, within the image itself, I can pick various points uh, and just warp them. So, for instance, if I pick this point, I can move that around somewhat, like so. And here. And maybe up there as well. Uh, and also, by holding these arms, you can twist the image, should you need to. So there is really quite a lot of control and quite a lot of bits and pieces that you can do with it. I need to bend these bits down a bit. Bend that out. Like so. So with all that uh, now complete, I'll just click on OK. Right, now you should be able to see just in this area that we have a slight double image, and that's because of where the, uh, the mask is. So if you go back onto the mask, uh, and we can just adjust that mask, so making sure that black is uh, selected, I will just Ping that through, like that, there we are, there, excellent. Okay, so finally what I think I'd like to do is just make a stamp layer of all these uh, active layers. So I'll just click away from all the layers, hold down the shift key, the control key, the out key and press the E key. Uh, and that will give me this new layer at the top here, uh, which is a conglomeration of all the ones that are active underneath it. In the end, we haven't used this uh, background at the top, so I will just delete that and get it out of the way. So with that uh, stamp layer selected, I'm just going to go to Filter, 
uh, and lens correction. This is a, a quick way that you can add a bit more distortion. Uh, just go to custom. Uh, I'm just going to come down to where it says horizontal perspective uh, and I'm just going to move that up a little which will just twist the image round. I think you can see that happening. Uh, and I'm just going to scale it back so that I end up with more of the effect on the screen. There we are, something like that. Uh, I think that looks uh, quite interesting. So I'll click on OK. And that will produce that. I'll turn the other layers off so we don't get confused. Right, uh, and now I'll just go for a crop. And just move that in here. There we are. Click on OK. And finally, I'm just going to add another layer uh, and just add uh, a bit of vignetting to the corners. Uh, so I'm just going to do that by literally painting it in uh, with uh, a big black brush. So I'm just going to use quite a large brush, very soft, just paint in the corners. just to take them down ever so slightly. There we are. And with that done, that uh, completes my, uh, my image. So it's a still life, uh, but it has a little bit of distortion in it. It has a few things uh, which are a bit uh, different, which gives it a bit more of an atmosphere, I think. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing all that. Uh, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.